I feel like God is calling me to just share some um, truth messages. Um, so, um, through... So I feel like this is what he's wanting me to do. Share the gospel. Give everybody a cyber hug because um, everybody has to be six feet apart. So anyway, um, through jail ministry, I started jail ministry last year in March. After um, I resigned from my job that I had for like 27 seasons, you can see the promise behind. You can see my picture of heaven, which I acquired working for Promise Productions, Inc. And that is not my picture. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to redecorate my office, but I haven't gotten around to doing it. So anyway, I wrote these lessons, and I feel like the Holy Spirit was giving me the, gu the uh, guidance for that. And I'm sorry my hair looks so horrible, but it just is what it is. So um, I just would like to read this lesson to y'all, but I want to start with prayer first because I really feel like um, some of the things that we're going through right now, we just... Um, we as Christians and as the church as a whole just really need to humble ourselves before God. We are facing unknown, unknown spiritual battle, things that we haven't ever faced before. So uh, I'm going to open us up in prayer. And um, so, Jesus, we just come to you and we just uh, pray that... Um, you would um, just be with us. Just open our hearts and our minds to what you want to teach us. And Holy Spirit, please let me be your vessel. Please work through me. Um, thank you for helping me write these lessons. I feel like they're anointed by you, not because I'm anything, because I'm not. And I uh, just pray that this might bless somebody and it might just... Um, Help somebody through a rough time that they're going through. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, um, I wrote this lesson, June the 15th of 2019, called The Three B's of Spiritual Battle. And it just seems like God really showed me very clearly um, that we go through a cycle. And uh, so, how many of you are in spiritual battle today? You know, I feel like we have this big unknown thing hanging over our heads with this uh, coronavirus. And uh, it just feels really, really heavy at times. But I know who's in control. And I have faith and I trust and I love God with my whole heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. So, but this is a battle that we can't even see we can't see the enemy clearly because we don't know what is going to happen in the future so a battle when we're feeling hopeless and helpless and all alone a battle that looks like there's no way out a battle that looks impossible when you're facing a mountain so huge you would just scream if you felt like it would change this battle at all possibly Trying to move my deal here. Possibly, this is your biggest spiritual battle in your life. I am so excited to share with you what God has shared with me about spiritual battles. It's plural because we face many as Christians. The good news, the awesome news, is that we don't have to face them alone. Isn't that great? news we don't have to face these battles for ourselves we just don't we have jesus jesus will fight our battles for us that's what i'm listening to in the background you can probably hear it this is how i fight my battles and i fight my battles a lot through music but anyway the first b of the three b's of spiritual battle is brokenness because 
we go into this battle being broken, just like totally broken. And uh, I need a Bible. Oh, hang on. I've got my church Bible down here. It's good to have a Bible because I want to read. So if you'll get your Bibles and if you'll read Psalm 34, 18. Um, this is a Psalm of David. And David knew. He knew about the physical and the spiritual battle and how how bad it could be. And uh, I really like Psalms. It's, Psalms, it's one of my favorite, favorite books in the Bible because there's just so much good stuff in here. So, 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. So, I read a little more than 3418, but... That's kind of my problem sometimes when I start reading scripture. I don't really know where to stop. So, um, David knew. David knew what a physical and what a spiritual battle was. And uh, he faced many. And so David took his battles to God in prayer a lot of times in, in Psalms. And with praise and worship. And so, even when we're broken... We need to have a spirit of praise and a spirit of worship. It's so important. I know it has, praise and worship have gotten me through so many battles in my life. And so often at the beginning of this battle, we feel such brokenness, such helplessness. It's okay to feel like this. It's okay. We don't have to stay here. It's our choice. It's our choice how long we want to feel utter vulnerability in our spiritual battles. Sorry, this is kind of hard reading and looking. I'll get better, I promise. So, um, you say, how is this my choice? Well, we choose what we want to do with our battle. We can hang on to it. We can try to do it on our own, which doesn't work very well for me. Um, but it's our choice. And so it's really pretty simple. Just reach out to the only one, Jesus, who will meet us in our brokenness. All we have to do is call upon his name. Express your opinion of your battle. He already knows all the details, but he cares what you think about it. You can cry or shout before him. Um, he loves you totally. He will not judge your pity party. We all have them from time to time. Do not isolate yourself in your brokenness. Call upon Jesus. Read scripture that pertains to your, ba your battle. Believe me, other people have faced your particular battle before. In our brokenness, sometimes we have to stay still to hear what is being said to us. Take your battle to your great defender, the one that surrounds you in battle. Take your battle. Be broken, but never defeated. Remember, the victory belongs to Jesus. So, that is the first B, is being broken. And we all go through it. We all go through these spiritual battles where we're just, we feel so beat down and broken. But take that battle to Jesus. Jesus knows what to do with that brokenness. So, the second B is breakthrough. And in Ephesians uh, 6, 10 through 20, Six, 
10 through 20. Six. 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand the, um, in the evil day and having done all to stand. So the battle belongs to the Lord. This is all of, um, I need to read through 20, sorry. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith which, which, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains and that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So our breakthrough comes when we give our brokenness to Jesus because he's the only one that really knows what to do with it. So we experience breakthrough when we turn this battle over to God. He knows all the details, the solutions, the outcome. It is a time that we have a great release of trying to control a battle that we can't control. We can't control it. There is such a peace at this moment when you give this to God. When you just turn it all over to Him, there's such a peace. And uh, when we decide we cannot accomplish what needs to be accomplished, God is capable. He's always capable and very able to take the battle and run with it without us. It would be awesome if we could start our battles with breakthrough instead of feeling the emptiness of brokenness. But we are so human that this is the cycle that we go through every time. I know I do. I just, God just showed me one day that this is a cycle. It's a cycle. If we start with breakthrough, we don't stay in the brokenness for very long. If we just realize in our brokenness, hey, I can't do this. I need help. Um, the breakthrough is letting go and trusting God, knowing with your whole heart that he's got this, whatever it is. However impossible it seems, today does not have to define the rest of your life. We all travel through seasons in this journey called life. We will face battles, some physical, but most spiritual. Trust Jesus with all your battles. So, we get our breakthrough when we trust God. When we just lay it at Jesus' feet and go, hey, I can't handle this. So when we do that, when we get our breakthrough, then we get the blessings that come with the breakthrough. Because God knows that we are trusting him fully. And he knows that we love him and that we are just, we know that he's got it, whatever it is. So the blessings um, will be Psalm 23, and that's just so funny because this is um, 
what my pastor TJ talked about this morning. We had our first <laughs> we had our first online church. It was the first time ever in our church. And uh what so this is what he talked about. He talked about Psalm twenty three part of the time and he talked about God's faithfulness and <laughs> in addition to Sunday school and church online I went and listened to four other messages. I went and listened to, let's see, next I listened to, who did I, oh, I listened to Stephen Furtick next. And then I listened to Louis Giglio. And then I listened to Greg Laurie. And then I listened to Francis Chan in there. And then I listened to um, Bill Johnson from Bethel Music. So I got <laughs> got five messages today, six including Sunday school, but this this really through a lot of those messages that I heard, it was about being obedient and trusting God in what we're going through and being strong and not being anxious and not having fear. So that's why I'm sitting in front of you tonight is because I do not want to be afraid to share the truth. And my heart is for so many people to get saved that nobody is left behind because that's not what God wants either. That's why he sent his son to die for us. But anyway, let's get back on the lesson. Blessings. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. What a, I love Psalm 23. It's my peace. Whenever I need peace, that's where I go. That is my peace right there. Because Jesus is our shepherd. We, we don't need to want for anything. Even in our brokenness and breakthrough, God will pour out his blessings. He cares for us and loves us so deeply. He loves us more than we can even express. He will shower you with blessings daily. Be sure and look for them. Blessings will come in the form of scripture. For me, many times, like you hear music in the background, uh, lyrics in a song, other people that God appointed and anointed for you in just situations that you know without a doubt are blessings from God. I love sunsets, sunrises, and rainbows. Sometimes he will shoot me one in the sky, and that instantly makes me feel blessed. At the completion of this spiritual battle, whatever it is, you will feel so totally blessed. You will have the burden lifted and will walk in freedom until the next spiritual battle. While we journey through the battle with Jesus in front of us, it is time for us to learn and someday help others also. All things we face in our journey or race to our finish is to help us to grow closer to Jesus and stronger in our faith. So, in conclusion, spiritual battles. Fear is a liar. You can get through this. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Never fear the battle with Jesus, your great defender in your corner. Struggles and battles are real, but with Jesus, our tests become testimonies. Our trials become triumphs, and our battles belong to God to be turned back to his glory. Do not be afraid to face your spiritual battles, but never go in without the full armor of God. From Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Remember, the victory belongs to Jesus always. So, these are some songs 
as many of you know, I share a song nearly every day because I love music. I love Christian music. It's all I listen to. And uh, I Raise a Hallelujah by Bethel Music. I Stand in Your Love by Bethel Music. Build My Life by Pat Barrett. Uh, by Upper Room or Bethel Music, they all sing it. Tremble by Mosaic, Defender by Francesca Battistelli and Stephanie Gretzinger, God of the Breakthrough by Mac Brock, Welcome the Healer by Passion Worship, Bring Praise, Worship, Bowing, and Staying Still to the Battle Before Jesus, Your Great Defender. So this is, this is a graph that I made. A spiritual battle cycle it was really hard to make I was really excited when I got it done so simple truths to repeat when you're in spiritual battle and this came from 88.3 the day the very day that I delivered this message um, at jail ministry God's got this the Lord fights for me not today Satan I am a child of God. I am a daughter of the King. He is able. It is finished. The victory belongs to Jesus. His grace is sufficient. Joy comes in the morning. Be still and know. I am not alone. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Fear is a liar. Fear has no grip on me. Christ is enough for me. He has overcome the world. I am a new creation in Christ. Jesus conquered the grave. Sin doesn't define me. Christ does. God is good all the time. God has a plan and purpose for my life to prosper me, not harm me. Jeremiah 29, 11. So, I just wanted to share that with you. It's kind of long. I'm going to try to do shorter lessons from now on. I want to show you my shirt. Thankful and blessed. Because I feel very thankful and blessed. Because Jesus saved me. Now I want to ask you. Are you saved? Is Jesus your Savior? Because there will be a day when the church will be gone all the christians will be gone and you'll be left behind and it's not going to be good but there's still time now jesus loves you has always loved you his love has never changed for you no matter what you've done he still loves you he loves you and will always love you. But he wants you. He wants to invite you. Into the kingdom of God. And he is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other path to God except through Jesus. And so. I've been making bracelets. I really like making bracelets. And so this one is. You might not be able to see it. It says, hashtag ITT Jesus. Invite them through Jesus. Because God told me one time, he said, it's not about you. He said, it's my invitation. It's my invitation to my heaven. So don't be offended if people don't accept my son as their savior. So I'm going to ask you, I want you to bow your head. And uh, check your heart. Is Jesus there? And if he's not, please consider inviting him in. I want to lead you through this prayer. Jesus, Jesus, I feel your presence. Holy Spirit, I feel your presence. God, I know. I know I'm doing what you're calling me to do. God, I feel a peace. So, Jesus... So please pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. 
I know you died for my sins, Jesus. Please forgive me. Jesus, I believe that you are God's one and only Son, that you came to earth to heal, love, and forgive, and to teach us. And you died such a cruel death, Jesus, on the cross for the entire world. And Jesus, you rose again on the third day. And Jesus, then you ascended back to heaven, to the right-hand side of God. I believe all this, Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to be my Savior and the Lord of life, my life forever and ever, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for this gift of salvation. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you prayed that prayer, you are a child of God today. You have a new beginning. You can tap into the new covenant with Jesus. And you can learn, you can read your Bible, you can pray can develop that relationship with Jesus and if I can help you in any way please contact me <sighs> because my heart is for none to perish for all to be in heaven for all all to come to this new heaven that's coming down in Jerusalem when Jesus comes it will be in a twinkle of an eye and there won't be time to get saved then. Please don't be left behind. Please fly Air Jesus with me. I've been wanting to fly Air Jesus for years now. All my friends know that. Anyway, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, God, for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through me. My lessons will probably not be this long anymore. But God bless you all. Please stay healthy. Jesus is king. Health is wealth. Don't panic, but prepare for we don't know what, but God's in control. I'm totally trusting him. He's got this. He's got the whole world in his hands. He knows what's going on. I just thank you for listening, and God bless you. Bye.